Hi everybody, welcome to the last video of 2021. Today we're going to talk about a virtual musician. Today's video is about Murdoch Nichols, bass player of the most popular virtual band of our time, Gorillaz. Gorillaz are an English virtual band created in 1998 by musician Damon Alburn and artist Jamie Hewlett. The band has sold over 25 million records worldwide and are cited by Guinness World Records as the world's most successful virtual band. Exploring a variety of musical styles through an eccentrically postmodern approach, Gorillaz has presented itself live in a number of different ways, such as hiding the touring band from the audience view while projecting animated band members on stage via computer graphics. Number one thing to point out about the role of their iconic bass player Murdoch Nichols is that Gorillaz music is loaded with bass guitar. Pretty much every song revolves around the bass line or has a significant one, and for the major part, they're catchy and cool. Most of them are also really simple, and that's not surprising since you need to be able to perform them with only one finger. So how do we approach a Gorillaz style bass line? First of all, use only quarter and eighth notes. The main feature about Murdoch is the ability to create cool bass lines with very simple elements. The first thing that jumps to eye is the fact that he uses pretty much exclusively quarter and eighth notes and quarter and eighth pauses. Of course, there's exceptions, but the backbone of Gorilla's bass lines is practically made out of quarter and eighth notes only and of pauses of the same duration. The pauses especially are often arranged in a very creative manner and are the true remarkable element of Murdoch's bass riffs. Yo, pretty packages of frosted delights. Look, it comes with a toy. <laughs> I like that. As a matter of fact, Gorilla's bass parts are so simple that it could be used to teach the basics of notes and pauses to kids. Blah, blah. Yeah. Also, the scales used are very basic and there's virtually no hammer-on or legatos or slapping, often sounding like a programmed bass line rather than a played one, giving a sort of robotic quality to the music of the band. Number two, play an ascending line and then descend back to root. What do I mean with that? A good chunk of Murdoch's lines are composed in a sort of symmetrical way. Dirty Harry is the best example. The main riff is composed by an ascending minor triad the descends back to root, using the same notes minus the first. This type of construction is quite frequent in the music of Gorillaz. Number 3. Insert a pause at the beginning or at the end of the bar. Murdoch is well known for his reggae influences. The key factor to his reggae vibe is once again the use of pauses. This is a standard reggae pattern over which I'm playing straight 8 notes like Didi or Ramon would. Not very reggae, right? But if I take out the first two notes... Or the last two... That's more like it. Besides this generic tip, there's a few recurrent patterns that we need to talk about. First of all, not playing on the one. Not playing on the one while the other instruments do gives immediately a touch of reggae to the music. But Murdoch's favorite is definitely a group of four, five, or six eighth notes followed by a pause. The last living souls, or we the last living souls. Once again, it's not what you play, it's what you don't play. The pause is here or what really defines the reggae quality of all these Gorillaz iconic bass lines. Number 4. Bending As mentioned before, Murdoch doesn't really use legato, vibrato, hammer-ons, pull-offs, slap and so on. But on a few occasions, he does use bending, adding a little spooky touch that goes perfectly with the band's imagery. Once upon a time at the foot of a great mountain, there was a town where the people known as... Uh. 
Before we go on, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. These videos require a great amount of time and work and your support is what keeps the channel going. Thank you. Number five, simple melodies. Murdoch mainly relies on pauses and root notes to build up his lines. And all the melodic variations are also pretty simple. The most used intervals are the classic octave, and root and fifth. That I got sunshine. In a bag, I'm useless, but, not for long. but Murdoch's favorite seems to be Root and Fourth Below, which appears on many tracks. <laughs> on Starshine, bass and guitar play around the fifth and fourth below intervals, kinda mirroring each other, creating different combinations of the two intervals. Murdoch's favorite scale is the Aeolian or natural minor, which is the backbone of some of his most popular lines like Clint Eastwood or Feel Good Inc. On Feel Good Inc, however, though the bass spells a clear E flat Aeolian scale, the guitar is playing an E flat major chord under it, creating a dissonance that gives a unique flavor to the track. This is not an isolated case. On Superfast Jellyfish, the bass line spells a G minor chord and an A diminished chord, while the keyboard plays G major and A major. The key word with Murdoch is simplicity. Just look at how many Gorillaz bass lines sound just like plain beginner exercises. On the Plastic Beach album, many bass lines are made out of only one note. Also, we need to take into consideration that in the music of Gorillaz, there's hardly anything else besides bass and drums. There's no lead instrument and the vocals are often heavy filtered and confined in the background. Still, despite the extreme simplicity, the bass guitar is the cornerstone of all these songs and definitely the most consistent element in the music of Gorillaz. That's all I have to say about Murdoch Nichols. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and follow me on Instagram.